approach unto you. Lord, we ask again according to your word that you satisfy us with the goodness of your house. Ask him for your own word this morning. He sent a word into Jacob and it has lighted upon Israel. Lord, that word that will lighten up my destiny, send it to me. Put it in the mouth of your servant. Lord, let my own word not be missing. In Jesus' precious name, Father, we thank you for another privilege again to be fed with the bread of life. Jesus, you said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. I ask this morning again that you send your word that will establish every one of us in abundant life in the precious name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, take absolute control. Make us a quick understanding. Let the word have free course and be glorified in every life. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name. Put your hands together for Jesus. Please, you may have your seats. It's my year of breaking limits. It's a privilege once again to bring God's, God's word in this second service. And I want to sincerely appreciate God and his able servant, the state pastor in the house, for this privilege. Praise the Lord. Our Sunday teachings for this month is captioned, Unveiling the Breakthrough Power of Love. Unveiling the breakthrough power of love. God's servant brought the first part. In the first service, please go for the CD and you'll get a full package. Praise the Lord. I'm taking part 1B by privilege. Unveiling the breakthrough power of love. What is love? Love is presented in scriptures as the greatest of all Christian virtues. It's presented as the greatest of all Christian virtues. Required for a meaningful and fruitful relationship with God and with man. In Matthew 22 from verse 35 to 40... A lawyer met Jesus and he asked him a question. He said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. He said, This is the first and great commandment. He said, the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, hands all the law and the prophets. All the law and the prophets. They are hinged on these two commandments. And that means, obedience to any other commandment will be a futile effort until you obey these first two commandments. Loving God with all your heart and with all your mind. You can't obey the first commandment and end up last in life. You can't obey the great commandment and end up small in life. Say so this is the first and the great commandment. Hallelujah. Love is the greatest. First Corinthians 13 and verse 13. It says, There abided faith, charity, hope, and charity. These three say, but the greatest of these is charity. Charity simply means neighborly love. 
Love in our context, therefore, can be defined as, number one, a God-first lifestyle. A God-first lifestyle. Number two, it can be defined as a kingdom priority lifestyle. Matthew 6, 33, seeking for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. A kingdom priority lifestyle lifestyle, placing God's kingdom in the first place in your considerations in life. What is love? Number three, it is giving one's heart to God. In Proverbs 23 verse 26, God said, my son, give me your heart. And let thy eyes observe my ways. Give me your heart. There is nothing you give to God that can matter to him more than your heart. God's servant said in the first service, he is more interested in our hearts than our acts. A-C-T. God is first and foremost more interested in our hearts than before our acts, praise the Lord. He's looking for men and women whose hearts are perfect towards him. Second Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9. says, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Throughout the whole earth. To show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. God is looking for men who will totally surrender their hearts to him. There is nothing you give to him that will matter to him more than your heart. Praise the Lord. Love is giving one's heart to God. You see, because once your heart is given to him, there is nothing else that you can give to him. Praise God. You know, even in the natural, the heart is the center of life. Even the biological heart is the center of life. It sustains your entire being. So both spiritually and physically, your heart is of greatest value to God than anything you can give to him. What is love? Number four, it is loving whatever God loves and also hating whatever God hates. In John 3 verse 16, God demonstrated his love for souls and he gave his only begotten son to save you and I. So if God loves souls, if you truly love him, you also will love souls. Hallelujah. In John 21 from verse 15 to 17, three good times. Jesus asked Peter, do you really love me? And he said, the only way you can prove that you love me is to feed my sheep is to feed my sheep and then feed my lamb. Praise God. Demonstrate your love for me by caring for the souls of men. Loving what God loves and hating whatever God hates. In 1 John 2 from verse 15 to 17, we see very clearly that if you really love God, you won't be caught up in love for the world and the things in the world. He said, if you love the world and you are attached to the world, it is like enmity against God. John, 1 John chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17. Loving what God loves, hating whatever God hates. Praise the Lord. 
It is placing God above all else, including oneself. Luke 14, 26 and 27. Love is placing God above all else, including oneself. He said, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he said, he cannot be my disciple. Whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Praise the Lord. Is he saying you should go out and be, you know, hating your parents or your brothers and sisters and uh, hating yourself literally? No. It simply means you must prefer him first to your parents, your brothers and sisters, your spouse, and even yourself. Pleasing God above all else, including oneself. Jesus demonstrated that in the Garden of Gethsemane in Matthew 26, verses 39 and 42. His own will was to avoid going to the cross. Especially since he was not going to die for his own sins. His, you know, flesh was, you know, trying to discourage him from going to the cross. But he prayed. He said, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Matthew 26, verse 39 and verse 42. That means surrendering your own will to the will of God. That is love. Choosing to do the will of God instead of your own will concerning any matter. That is love for God. Hallelujah. We can also define love as obeying God no matter the cost. Obeying God no matter the cost. John 14 and verse 21. Jesus said, Anyone that has his commandment and keeps them, he it is that loveth him. And he said, He that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Obeying God no matter the cost. That is love. Just like Abraham, our father of faith, in Genesis 22, from verse 1 to 18, God decided to test his love for him. God wanted to find out whether Abraham will love the gift more than the giver of the gift. I, and he said, Sacrifice your son, Isaac. The one that you love. Praise the Lord. Go and sacrifice your son, Isaac. The one that you love. So that you will not go and uh, think he's talking about Ishmael. Praise the Lord. So God himself knew. And it's normal for Abraham to love Isaac passionately. He has waited for him all his life. And that God wanted to see whether his love for Isaac would be more than his love for him who gave him Isaac. And he passed the test. Praise the Lord. Abraham passed the test. He didn't bother about what it would cost him. Love is obeying God no matter the cost. What is in love that engenders breakthrough? What is it that is in love that engenders breakthrough? Number one, love enhances access to revelation. In John 15 verse 15, Jesus said to the disciples, I call you friends. You are no more servants. Because the servant does not know what his Lord does. He said, but I have called you friends. All things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. When you are in love with anyone... You don't hide secrets from that person. You reveal the deep things in your heart to that person. That's what Jesus is saying here. And so when you are in love with God, he reveals deep secrets to you that he will not reveal to others. Praise God. 
In 1 Corinthians 2, verses 9 and 10, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, it has not entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him, but he reveals them to us by his spirit. In verse 10. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. When you are in love with God, he reveals deep secrets to you that he would not reveal to others. It enhances access to revelation. And the more of these revelations of the secrets of God you have, you begin to find out your, heart, your life becomes, begins to experience a revolution. Through the revelations of God, you begin to command revolutions in life. Praise the Lord. Number two, love empowers our faith to deliver maximally. Galatians 5 and verse 6. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Faith which worketh by love. Faith which worketh by love. That means without love, faith cannot work. Love is the working power of faith. So if, for instance, you consider faith to be a vehicle, you can consider love as the engine of faith. Love is the engine of faith. Just like a vehicle will be grounded without an engine, love will also be grounded without faith. Without, I mean, faith will be grounded without love. It's a faith which worketh by love. In 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 2, hear what Paul said. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 2, he said, Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I, can, I could remove mountains and have no charity, I am nothing. That faith will be limited in operation. How does that play out? It, love confers divine nature to us, which enables us to operate the God kind of faith. In 1 John chapter 4, Verses 16 and 17. First John 4, 16 and 17. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. He said, God is love. God is what? Love. That is his principal nature. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. And I said, because as he is, so are we in this world. Because as he is, so are we in this world. When you dwell in love, he says you dwell in God. And then you can represent him here in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. Love confers divine nature upon us. Which enables us to operate the God kind of faith. In Mark 9 verse 23, the Bible says, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And then in Mark 10 verse 27, With men it may be impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. So when you operate in the God kind of love, divine nature is imparted. For you to operate in the God kind of faith. It puts you in the same class with God. The class of no impossibilities. Praise the Lord. You will notice in scripture that whenever Jesus was moved with compassion, great miracles follow. Like the two major miracles. In the feeding of the 5,000 with five loaves and two fishes. One of the greatest miracles that happened in his earthly ministry. In Matthew 14, verse 14, the Bible says he was moved with compassion. His heart went out to the people. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and healed their sick. Then following, he began to ask, how do we give food to these people? And then he went ahead 
to multiply miraculously five loaves and two fishes to feed 5,000 people, minus women and children. Each time he's moved with compassion. Great miracles happen. Another great miracle that happened was the raising of Lazarus from the dead after being buried four days. You see clearly there his love for Lazarus and his sisters triggered that miracle. In John chapter 11, verse 3, when they were reporting the incidents to him, they said, Therefore his sister sent to him, say, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. In verse 5, the Bible says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. He loved them. And then from verse 32 to 36, when Mary met him weeping, he said, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Verse 34 says, Jesus said, where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. That's the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. And then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. They saw a clear demonstration of deep love in the heart of Jesus for Lazarus and his sisters. And then from verse 41 to 44, was released. He said, remove the stones. Lazarus, comfort. And he that was dead and buried for four days came out of the grave. Praise the Lord. Love in his heart triggered that miracle. It empowers our faith to deliver maximally. And number three, love facilitates answers to our prayers. Psalm 66 verse 18, David said, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And so, when you are in love with God and with man, you will not regard iniquity in your heart. And that positions you to receive answers to your prayers. Now, Jesus was teaching us to pray in Matthew chapter 6. From verse 12 to 15, he said we must forgive those who sin against us. He said, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. And then in verse 14, he said, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Forgiveness is a manifestation of love. If you want your prayers to be answered, you must forgive. As a matter of fact, love is all about giving and forgiving. Those two words actually summarize a life of love. Giving and forgiving. You can't experience speedy answers to prayers carrying on forgiveness in your heart. Because the God you are going to pray to, you have also offended him in so many ways. Praise the Lord. And he said expressly here, if you don't forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father also will not forgive your trespasses. And if he doesn't forgive your trespasses, your prayers cannot be answered. So when you forgive, you are actually helping yourself. Not necessarily the person you are forgiving. Praise the Lord. You are helping to ensure that your access to God is not blocked. Therefore, you must let go of every form of bitterness. You can't be bitter and be better. Praise the Lord. Let go of every form of unforgiveness. That is a manifestation of love. And it facilitates answers to our prayers. 
1 John 3 verse 22 says, Anything we ask of him we receive because we do the things that are pleasing in his sight. Whatsoever we ask we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. Forgiveness is pleasing in his sight. Praise the Lord. If you check through the attributes of love enumerated in 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 4 to 7, you see it has a lot to do with forgiveness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You don't keep record of wrongs. Hallelujah. Number four, love enhances access to wisdom from above. Love enhances access to wisdom from above. In James chapter 3 verse 17, we see the attributes of the wisdom from above there. And we see that it is intertwined with a life of love. Say, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. So a life of love easily has access to the wisdom from above. Hallelujah. It's our covenant day of divine favor. What is divine favor? Number one, it is to be liked against all odds. First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 4. It is to be liked against all odds. You are liked not because of natural qualification, but because God decides to qualify you, just like he did for David. He said, how be the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he had chosen Judah to be the ruler, and of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he liked me. He liked me to make me king over all Israel. God liked David. He preferred him to all his other brothers. Naturally, no one saw him qualified. They forgot him in the backside of the desert, keeping the sheep. He was not considered as a replacement for Saul. But God picked him up. Praise the Lord. I see somebody being chosen by God. Those who have disqualified you, after this encounter, they will discover that God has qualified you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Number two, in Psalm 44, from verse 1 to 3. Psalm 44, from verse 1 to 3. We have heard with our ears, our, um, oh God, our fathers have told us, what work thou didst in their days in the times of old? How that thou didst drive out the hidden with thy hand and plantest them? How thou didst afflict the people and cast them out? For they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand and thy arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor unto them. And so from that verse 3, we can say that divine favor is the light of God's countenance upon a believer that brings out the beauty in him. Hallelujah. The light of God's countenance upon a believer. In Psalm 34 verse 5, they looked unto him. They were lighting. And their faces were not ashamed. Praise the Lord. The light of God's countenance. It was God's countenance upon David that made him to find favor in the sight of Saul at first sight. In 1 Samuel 16, verses 29, I mean 21 and 22. As soon as Saul saw him, when he was recommended as his, you know, armor bearer to stand before him. As he was being afflicted, the Bible says he loved him greatly. Then he became his armor bearer. And he sent to his father and said, let David 
Stay with me. For he has found favor in my sight. At first sight. Praise the Lord. It was the countenance, the light of God's countenance shining upon him. Praise the Lord. And quickly we'll run through some keys to divine favor. God's servant brought out quite some in the first service. Number one key is new birth, which is evidenced by righteous living. Not just professing new birth, but it must show in your lifestyle. Psalm 5 and verse 12. He said, For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous, and with favor will thou compass him as with a shield. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. Who will he God bless? Who will God bless? The righteous. And then he will compass him with favor as with a shield. We are made the righteousness of God in Christ. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. As you live out that righteousness of Christ in you, you are positioned as a candidate for divine favor. Praise the Lord. Favor is not free. There is a covenant positioning that you must assume in order to attract the favor of God. Proverbs 11 verse 27 says, He that diligently seeketh good, procured favor. So it, favor is provoked, is procured. Say, but he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. Proverbs 12 verse 2 says, A good man, a good man, not an evil man, a good man obtained favor of the Lord. Who obtains favor from the Lord? A good man. He said, but a man of wicked devices, will he condemn? Hallelujah. You want to enjoy divine favor? Let your new birth reflect in a good life. Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Genesis 39 verse 6. He wasn't a crooked person. Praise the Lord. He left, the, the, the Potiphar left all that he had in Joseph's hand and he knew not all that he had saved the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. He was a goodly person and well favored. His connection to God reflected in his lifestyle. Praise God. Daniel was a righteous man. And then, he enjoyed favor. Daniel chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. He proposed not to defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. And then, in verse 9, the Bible says, God brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Don't live a crooked life and expect God to favor you. Praise the Lord. It's so crucial. Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, the pattern's Son of God, God incarnate, didn't just come about enjoying favor with God and man. He lived a good life. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good. Doing what? Doing good. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. If he was doing evil, God would not be with him. He wasn't going about impregnating people's wives or duping people of their money or, uh, you know, breaking homes. No. He wasn't going about from one beer parlor to the other. Praise the Lord. He went about doing good. There was no one evil incident reported about Jesus in his three and a half years of earthly ministry. And then the Bible says in Luke chapter 2 verse 52, and Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and man. You will be a good man. You must be a good woman in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Number two, serving God and the interests of his kingdom. Psalm 102 from verse 13 to 15. 
when you favor the dust of Zion, then you have positioned yourself for divine favor. When you take interest in the growth of the house of God, say, for thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. That talks about the developments in his house. You, it positions you for his own favor. If you are not interested in the things of the kingdom, God cannot be interested in your own things. If you don't mind his business, God cannot mind your business. Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. Luke 2 verse 49. In Job 36 verse 11, he said they will be and serve him. They will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Praise God. No one ever runs out of favor running after God and the interests of his kingdom. In Malachi 3 verse 17 and 18, he said, I will spare them. In that day when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spared his own son that served him. Then shall he return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that served God and him that served him not. Hallelujah. No one ever runs out of favor running after God and the interests of his kingdom. David said in Psalm 34 verse 10, The young lions may lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Praise God. And so as you make sacrifices, investing your financial resources, investing your time, investing your energy, in the advancement of God's kingdom, it, it, you position yourself for God's favor. It procures favor for you. Because God is not a user of men. Praise the Lord. You know how Solomon stumbled into wealth that he never prayed for by investing heavily into the kingdom. In 1 Kings chapter 3, from verse 3 to 13. Praise God. Today, as you subscribe to serving God and the interests of his kingdom with passion, the favor of God that flavors life will begin to speak loud in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. And this favor will reflect in form of marital settlement. He that findeth a wife Find that the good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Proverbs 18 verse 22. It will manifest in supernatural promotion. Just like it happened for Joseph. It will manifest in supernatural fruitfulness. Hallelujah. And finally, you must increase in knowledge. You must increase in knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 13 and verse 15. It's a good understanding. Give it favor. Say, but the, the way of the transgression is hard. Good understanding, give it favor. So you must go for knowledge. You see, Jesus, the Bible says in Luke 2, verse 52, increased in wisdom, first and foremost. He was growing in, in, his, in wisdom more than in stature. Say, and Jesus increased in wisdom and then stature and in favor with God and man. That's why at the age of 12, they marveled at his wisdom and his understanding. He was growing more in wisdom than in stature. And then he began to grow in favor with God and favor with man. Grace and peace multiplies through knowledge. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. And so you must go for more knowledge of God and via his word. They that do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. Daniel 11 verse 32. Proverbs 19 2 says, For the soul of man to be without knowledge, it is not good. It is not good. It is not good. It is ignorance that leads to affliction and hardship. Isaiah 5 and verse 13. The knowledge of the creator is superior to the knowledge of his creatures. In Jeremiah chapter 9 verses 23 and 24, God himself said with clarity, 
He said, what he takes delight in is your knowledge of him. He said, thus hear the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his, his might, nor the rich man in his riches. He said, let him that glory and glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which has exercised loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. He said, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. He delights in you knowing him. Many people are busy struggling to know men so that they can connect with favor. But know God first. Even with Jesus, it was favor with God before favor with man. Praise the Lord. Many years ago, my son told me in one of the secondary schools he attended, his one of the teachers said he was the one who accommodated the governor in that state during his national youth service. That is, when that governor, the serving governor at that time, was doing his NYSE, that man who was teaching my son in secondary school was the one that gave him accommodation. But this man was still riding one old motorcycle. The governor did not remember him. Praise the Lord. In the same state, not that he's, I mean, the same state, he's still there teaching and riding motorcycle and struggling with life. The governor never remembered the good that that young man did for him as a youth copper. Until you find favor with God, men will not remember you. Proverbs 21 verse 1 says, The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And as the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he wills. Praise God. You will find favor with God. Amen. Do all that's within your power to ensure that you have favor with God. And men will be compelled to favor you. Proverbs 16 verse 7 says, When the way of a man please God, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. When a man's way please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. By this encounter today, even those that do not lack your face, they will be compared to do you good. In the mighty name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. Please, you may be comfortably seated. Hallelujah. I'm sure you are blessed by that word. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her. Yea. The set time is come. Hallelujah. The time to favor you is now. Yeah. And did you hear me very well? I say it's now. Yeah. Only three people is believing that word. Yeah. Oh, I can see your neighbor is more anxious to receive the blessing than you. Yeah. The time to favor her has come. When the time to favor you comes. No devil can stop it. Praise the name of the Lord. No devil. All that you need to do is to position. You have heard those words. And I'm sure it's reorganizing and repositioning you. The moon is said to have no light on its own. But what the moon does is that it is wise enough to correctly position itself to the direction of the sun. And then it reflects the sun the light rays from the sunlight. And then when you look at it, you say, what a bright moon. This moon has great light. Very great light. This moon is very bright. It has great light. And then you are celebrating the light as if, as if it is from the moon. But the moon has no light. The same way, the words that you have had is to reposition you so that you can enjoy the blessings of God. God can lavish his blessings upon you and his favor upon you. And then things will start happening through your hands and people will be thinking that you are the one. But no, they got not the land in possession by their own power. Psalm 44 where we just finished reading. But your, the light of your countenance and because you have favor unto them, when you correctly reposition to the light from God's word, you begin to exude the favor of God that will make you a celebrity in your world. And that's what is about to happen to you. Because the time to favor you has come and it is now. Oh, you didn't hear me very well. When you 
your tongue comes, everything turns to your favor. When your tongue comes, the, the time to favor you has come. The, the time to favor you has come. <laughs> when it was time to favor Esther, the Bible said she didn't need anything. When it is your turn, everything will turn to your favor. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. And when the turn of Esther came. Now, when the turn of Esther. Put your name there. I said put your name there. Okay, if you can't remember your name, just put my name there for shortcut. Praise the name of the Lord. When the turn of Esther came. The daughter of Abihir, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for a season, was come to go in unto the king. She required nothing. Praise the name of the Lord. She required nothing. But what a guy, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the woman appointed, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of some of them. In the sight of many of them. In the sight of all of them that look upon her. When her tongue came, she required nothing. Listen to me by this prophetic declaration. Whatever it is that they say you need to qualify you for that job, for that position, for that blessing. Because it is your tongue, they will wave it for you in the name of Jesus. When the tongue of Esther came, they required nothing. Okay, If they were going to require any qualification, will Esther has ever entered the palace. A stranger. There was no any comeliness in her. They, were, they had already finished the beauty com com competition. All across the region. They needed a replacement for the queen in the palace. It wasn't people like Esther they were naturally looking for. They have done all the beauty competition. From every region. They have supplied people. From Robo, Robo Kingdom, from Shakiri Kingdom, from everywhere. From they, they, are, they have they, the women has planned. They have decorated them. They have gone to the best saloon in town. They, they were wearing the most fashion dress in town. They have learned how to walk like cat. But the king did not choose any one of them. But when Sarah came, I mean, when Esther came, the village girl. From one deep hamlet in Mosugade, she came with her bush hairstyle. She didn't know how to dress well. Maybe she was wearing slippers, but when she came in like that, the king stood up and said, That's the one I want. My God will favor you in the name of Jesus. My God is favoring you in the name of Jesus. When your tongue comes, when the time to favor you comes, Everything that they say disqualify you, they will push it aside. Rise up on your feet right now. Lift up your voice and decree it is my turn to favor. It is my turn to be favored. Lift up your voice and declare. It is my turn. It is my turn for favor. Like around the Susia. It is my turn. It is my turn. It is my turn for favor. I must be favored. I must be favored. Larado seke toro do sheteri andara bala baba. Mekoro susiata. Blessed be your name, Lord. Lift up your voice and decree. I must be favored. I must be favored. Loro seke ke toro do susa. Blessed be your name, Lord. Jesus mighty name we are prayer thou shall arise O God and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her yea they said time is come I stand by the authority of that word therefore every area of desired favor for your people I declare it release now in the name of Jesus Every labor without fruit to show is ended in the name of Jesus. I command favor 
favor from the work of your hands in the name of Jesus. Whatever you lay your hands to do from today, it shall be a fruit in the name of Jesus. You will no more labor in vain in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, except the Lord builds, they that labor, they labor in vain. Except the Lord watches the city, the watchmen, they stay awake in vain. Lord, for every businessman, for every businesswoman, for every career man or woman, I command favor now in the name of Jesus. Your blessings will not be transferred to another person in the name of Jesus. Every fruitless labor is ended in the name of Jesus. You will not build for another to inhabit. You will not plant for another one to eat. As the Lord live by God's favor, you will enjoy the fruit of your hands in the name of Jesus. Every door that has been shut, you have struggled and struggled to open by your strength. For by strength shall no man prevail. I therefore decree today, by the favor of God, that good door is open in the name of Jesus. That visa you have been trying to get, struggled and struggled and struggled and struggled. I decree by God's favor, receive it in the name of Jesus. Any of your loved ones struggle, struggling concerning any legitimate document, wherever they are, inside or outside the country, by the favor of God now, you will hear good news in the name of Jesus. That great idea God has given to you in business that you have been trying to start and keep getting blockages, obstacles. Today, by God's favor, it will find the light of the day in the name of Jesus. Every eligible single going round the circle, going round the circle, believing God for your own God-given husband or wife, he that findeth a wife, findeth favor. I decree from today, there shall be a divine connection in the name of Jesus. Between now and the next three months, you are supernaturally connected. You are supernaturally connected. In the name of Jesus. Everyone believing God for the fruit of the womb. He says, and they shall serve the Lord their God. He shall bless their bread and their water. None shall be barren among them. By your favor, you open the womb of Sarah. By your favor, you open the womb of Elizabeth. And by favor, you grant Mary the virgin who never met any man. Conception. You are the same God. The same yesterday, today and forever. By that same power, I command miracle conception for everyone that desire. Miracle conception for everyone in that category. In the name of Jesus. Whatever area you need favor, receive it now in the name of Jesus. Favor in your academics in the name of Jesus. Favor in your business in the name of Jesus. Favor in the work of your hands. Favor in your family in the name of Jesus. And I decree, between now and the next seven weeks, there shall be straight testimonies in the name of Jesus. None of you will be stranded this week. Every day it will be harvest of favor. Everywhere you go, favor will welcome you. In the name of Jesus, God will send help for you this week. No accident is permitted this week. In the name of Jesus, I command divine intervention concerning every issue for you in the name of Jesus. The God of Bishop Edebo goes with you. Be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. It's my year of breaking limit. Then what eyes have not seen or ears heard shall be your experience all through the year 2020. Congratulations. God bless you.